sitting in the car for half an hour trying to figure out what I'm going to say. Then uh, I realized, oh my gosh, it's 7.31, so I said, grab the umbrella, I run here. And I said, you know, you speak about the brain. So you should remember. Anyway, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the brain and uh, the... Um,
I tried to see somebody want to leave, you know, so I can find myself an excuse. And they, they, they just made me feel so good that I, I gave them the hour lecture and I will never do it again. What is it? not going to happen tonight. What's that? Uh, yeah, somebody, I just saw that when I was sitting talking uh, in the back, and then I saw, uh, I saw somebody coming. I said, oh my gosh, you know, the, I thought I'd be. It better be good. <laughs> I'm going to. Anyway, the reason I selected the lecture about the brain is because there is so much we see of deterioration of brain function in society. Uh, and, and there is no specific lecture, since I gave my last lecture on the brain, which was five years ago, there was no other lecture was given to show uh, what's new about the brain. Since last time I, I gave the lecture, which is, I think came up, um, well, it must be something. Uh, you get that in the theme, right? Uh, so in any case, I am the one who discussed with Doris and said, let's talk, let's give a lecture on the brain. Uh, first was the heart, because we figure if you didn't have a good heart, if you didn't have a good circulation, then we have a problem, you know, because uh, you can be taking all the vitamins you want, but you don't feel as good if the heart was not pumping good enough. Or if there's a blockage, in the highway, you know, which we talked about last time. How many people here were hit last time in the last lecture? Okay, good, because I'm gonna ask your lecture to remember <laughs> from last lecture. How many miles of arteries approximately we have now? Do you know about? 500,000. That his brain is good. Okay, uh, then you can go home. <laughs> so, uh, 500,000 miles, we decided to speak about it in the last lecture, which I'm going to cover a little bit of it, this lecture, because one of the things about the nutrition lecture I give, I connect them with each other. And one lecture connects to the next one, to the next one. So, some of you might ask, what is the next lecture? I already thought about that uh, tonight, today at uh, 5, 10 p.m., exactly because I was praying and I was told my eye was going to be lecturing. And I figure it's going to be about detoxification of the body, digestive system. Uh, we're going to talk about that uh, because <coughs> we'll talk about the stomach, the liver, the small intestine, large intestine, lymphatic system, upper flora, all that stuff is going to be most likely in the next lecture in October. And then what, which lecture would be with that going to end the year with? Most likely it's going to be aging process. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about general lecture about the whole body, how white age. You know, we're not going to, some stuff will be repeated. But I don't want to really do what I did in Milwaukee and waste lots of time talking about things because I have a specific thing in my mind what I'm going to talk about regardless of what I have in front of me right here because I have about 500 papers here and uh, most of the time I start with them and then I, like um, somebody told me in the back, you start and you go someplace else eventually. <laughs> so my friend in the back told me, don't do that. Uh, so in any case, I'm going to be behaving, well behaving tonight and stay with the subject. The subject is going to be uh, first what, uh, what's the brain function? What's the brain do? And then that will take approximately, if I show you some of the stuff I have here about the brain, it will take about one hour. I'm not gonna do that. Th but I'm gonna start right away giving you the things that make the brain malfunction. Then after which is going to be the nutrition, 
It's going to be the suppletion. It's going to be the infection. It's going to be the autoimmune. It's going to be the hormones. It's going to be the chemicals. So I covered the, all the things that affected it already right here. So we're going to start with one and go to the other and other. And then if we have extra time, then we'll show, we show some, some of the pictures we have right here. To, I don't think anybody here disagree that the most important organ in our body is the brain. Without it, you don't have a life. You can go to a nursing home, visit nursing home. Imagine you there. Look at the people there, imagine you are in place of them. Do you want to be like that? You follow me or not? Some of the stuff you see, you wonder why we are living as humans like this. Sometimes when I saw my mom and dad in getting sicker and sicker, Sometimes I pray for them to die rather than suffer. And I never could imagine to do that. I did. I said, this is not life. Uh, the guy's in a coma, he's this and this and this. Uh, I hope he dies, you know. It doesn't mean I don't want my father. I'd rather be dead myself than be in a nursing home. Somebody turned me right and left, right and left, right and left. And charging, somebody <laughs> told me, they charge $15,000 a month. For what? To bankrupt the family. It's a big business, nursing homes. So it is a big business. Our job in the last lecture is for you to know how to have good heart and good circulation. We talked about that. And if you want to have the DVD, it's available outside, right? We have the DVD of the last lecture, right? One of the older forms, correct? Right. Those, right? Yeah. Okay, you can order the last lecture about that because we're not gonna have time to talk about that. Tonight is all about the brain, but rather than me wasting time, try to show you uh, how difficult the brain is and uh, all the anatomy and the physiology and the pathology and all the biochemistry of the brain, it will be a waste of time. I'd rather do that, just go to the brain directly and talk about it. Uh, are you following me or not? Because yeah. everybody here knows without a good brain, your life is over. So that's not reason to show what the brain looks like. We do have nice pictures, but I want to just show you the real thing because I have been practicing for many, many years, over 30 years, and I have experience of one thing for sure, that, that the patient who had nutrition, nutrition care, good care, Shackley patient, which I had for, I know them for over 30 years. I met Dr. Shackley in 1969, 1970, something like that, and that, that, about that time. So, uh, that's how long I've been prescribing the, the shackle vitamins to people. So I can tell which one of my patients are doing well mentally and which one is going up straight because I see them, I ask them questions, I look at them, I ask them questions about their life, they think I want to chat, but I'm not, I'm trying to examine the memory examine what's going on and things like that. And I know among the people who take care of themselves nutritionally, their brain functions better. But not, not perfect. We are hoping for perfection. We're not perfect. But we, have, we hope to come close. When we talked about the heart last time, we came close. When we talked about the omega-3, the CoQ10, we talked about the, uh, the antioxidant, and we talked about the, uh, the ATP tre treatment, we talked about the homocysteine treatment. We came close that we can actually, with nutrition in the arteries, root of the arteries, clean them, and also rebuild them back again, you know, rebuild them again. And uh, some of the picture I have in the back, 
over there um, is a picture. I just want to show it to you because I might not have time. I showed it last time. It looks like this. Basically, is a picture of a dog heart uh, before the experiment and after, and a human heart underneath right here. And when you look at it, you can you can figure it yourself if your brain functions. So if we look what causes a brain problem, we find out number one problem beside the poor circulation becomes the nutrition. We are talking today about the things that we can prevent and the things we can cure. Not the things that you can say, my mother had uh, uh, diabetes, then I have diabetes, my, my mother had Alzheimer, you have Alzheimer. Now, we're, not, we're gonna talk about the stuff that we can reverse. So circulation already been talked about, which we will discuss it a little bit more during the lecture, but I wanna concentrate first on nutrition. Number, num, number one, I'm sorry, circulation, number two is nutrition, and number three is the, the stress, and toxicity is number four. Those are the four things that goes around and affects the brain function. If the circulation is not good, there would be a problem. And that's what happened when lots of you were in Shackley for 30 or 40 years, and you notice that you are feeling good, and then some of your, this, some of the, your customers will say, I'm not, I thought I'm gonna feel better, or I'm taking this, I don't feel as good, uh, I, I thought I feel better, or something like that. It could be that the patient, that person who's taking Shackley, not taking enough, that's number one. Number two, it could be also the digestive system is not good. It could be the circulation is not good. You know, you do not have to blame the product. If you don't eat, don't drink, and take oxygen, you're gonna die. So you cannot put the blame and the air doesn't have enough oxygen or the water is not there or the shackle is not. <coughs> That's what I noticed among the people who come to see me in the office. They said, I've been taking this shackle for uh, 30 or 40 years, and then I want more out of it. Because uh, somebody told them, for example, you're gonna be 10 years younger with Vivix, then they wanna be 20 years younger, <coughs> okay? And they look at the mirror, they see themselves as 20 years younger, and say, how come I'm not 20 years younger? <laughs> well, because there are other problems besides supplements. It's called circulation, it's called stress, it's called toxicity, it's called infection, it's are you following me or no? So we're gonna go to the nutrition part. The reason I wanna go to the nutrition part because nutrition plays a big role in the, in the brain function. The brain itself, so we just uh, understand how the brain works. The brain itself is made from different tissues like this. This is the frontal lobe, and this is the parietal lobe, and the, the, I'm sorry, temporal lobe, and parietal lobe, and the occipital lobe. Different parts of the brain, they do different functions. And then we have the, the midbrain comes down right here, which differentiates us between us and animals, because most of animals, are, most, all animals don't have the midbrain. Like, we do have midbrain, they don't have midbrain. And this is why we can think different from what they think. Because they don't have, the, they're missing that part. And their function, are you following me or not? So anybody who thinks that we came from monkeys and all of that, you're welcome to think that way if you wish that your ancestor were, my ancestor were not, was Adam and Eve, they were not monkeys. But some people who are, uh, you know, atheists who are, I see them in my office, uh, they always think about Mother Nature and all of that stuff, and I don't know, I don't know if uh, nature had a mother to it, but <laughs> that's how they think. But we are, as a human, have a brain, 
that it is so complicated that this part of the ring, the front part right here, that is the part, if you damage it, you have no reasoning, no fear, no guilt, and you can kill and with no feeling of guilt. That's the frontal lobe of the brain. That's if it damage the stroke, the person acts like they have no emotion, no feeling. Then we have the part in the back that sees the, the, uh, everything all day, you know, you can, from the, from the eye right here, it goes back right there, the TV screen in the back of your, your brain in the back here, and then you see everything and it goes in a mirror, and it goes upside down, then after that, at night, it goes back to the, this part right here and is stored and the memory center right here. <coughs> Everything you see. So uh, this other part right here, it has different functions of, of sensation and motor and all these things. So anyway, the brain is not as lucky as the heart <coughs> or the lung or the liver or the kidney that they have space. If the brain bleeds, there is no place to go. Uh, if I remember now, if you have this, there is no place for the brain to go, then you die. Just like that athlete, she died when she was a ski snow or something and hit her head, and she died a week later, I think, you remember? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Uh, because, because, and I have a nephew also who was playing hockey in uh, MIT, and, uh, not hockey, but rugby, and then, uh, I don't know why people play rugby, you know, hit their head together like this, you know. But anyway, the, and he had a headache, go to Harvard every day, a headache, 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 for about two, three weeks, and they give him medicine, and then after that he called me and said, Uncle, I've had a headache, I don't know what to do, it's getting worse, they're giving me codeine and Vicodin, and I said, oh, that's 17 years old, you're taking Vicodin, maybe you're bleeding inside your brain. They, when he went to the doctor in Harvard, he said, no, you have HMO. We don't take HMO. Uh, so we don't, we're not going to do CAT scan because you have HMO. That's Harvard Medical School. So he flies all the way. When I used to have a clinic right here in Brazil, and Higgins, uh, some of you came to my clinic when I used to have it, if you remember that. Then I told the doctor that who worked for me, don't leave, I'm going to Los Angeles, and so you see him coming from the airport. See what he looks like. Then I was on the aeroplane when he looked at him and he said, Yo, I send you immediately to Alexei brother. <laughs> then immediately the doctor saw something is wrong. Harvard did not see that wrong. The doctor at Harvard was the head of the neurology department. Don't tell me he didn't see that. He knows the brain more than I do. That's his job. It's money. And and, and, and you are just nothing but a number in society. You know, uh, if you look at us in society, we are numbers. And if you got your health, you got everything. If you don't get your health, you got nothing. And what part of it, how to build this brain? How to make it? In his case, he had to have four open brain surgery to evacuate three areas of bleeding. And the brain shifted to the side, half an inch, and if it goes half an inch, it dissects, so it was almost that night it's gonna dissect. Dissecting is cut the spinal cord. And then they operated the evacuated one, and the brain came back, and evacuated the other, the area came back, and he's still alive, and he's now uh, assistant professor at Mayo Clinic uh, of, of orthopedic surgery. So in any way, the, uh, this kind of ex uh, experiment I see in my life, when I see people <coughs> talk to do them and have a good time and we're joking and all of that, and, and the next time I see them, they had a stroke and I cannot talk to them and I see the deterioration and all of that, it makes me feel that I will never allow any of my patients to go through that again. Uh, if that was the blood pressure caused it or the sugar, 
or arterial sclerosis or whatever caused that person or my patient to die, I'm not going to let the other one go through the same thing. The brain has many cells uh, in it. And those cells will carry the function. If you came here tonight to know about nutrition, you need to know how to make your brain cells healthy. That's all it is, the lecture today about the brain cell. It's the brain cell of the frontal lobe, or the parietal lobe, or occipital lobe, I don't care which lobe. You, you, know, you follow me or not? We're gonna get to the basic first. The, I just wanna give you hope, which I left pictures in the back there to show you of somebody who had Alzheimer disease, documented, and the doctor in the University of Southern California decided to give that person vitamins and hormones while she had Alzheimer's disease, he was experimenting on her. She was killed in an accident. They did the autopsy of the brain. They find the her brain was made four new brain uh, nerve cells. New, brand new uh, cords. If that's the case, and also you probably know that lots of you, lots of you have seen people who had a stroke, couldn't walk, Two years later, they can walk, couldn't talk. A few years later, they can talk. You follow me or no? <laughs> so the brain can revive itself. And this brain has wires coming like this. And the brain has 200 billion cells. So 200 billion cells right now, in this moment, are working. Some work automatic, if you like it or not. These are the cells that control the breathing and control the space around you, the temperature, how you feel, and the heart. They don't wait until you tell them work. They always work all the time. The others, they make your life better. They, they function, make you, like the frontal lobe right here. This is from love and hate and jealousy and also anger and control and this and that and that. And the parietal lobe right here, that's for memory and the occipital lobe for vision and that. Every part has a function, the 200 billion cells. So, 200 billion cells, what do they look like? They look like they look like any cell in the body. You, you, all of you, most of you heard me before. How many people here for the first time? So I can get some idea. Okay, we have about 10 people. Uh, human body made from cells. Okay, that's the only thing you need, you need to know you didn't know. All these years I've been talking, I've said eight years, about the cell. Now you know everything. So the, the brain cell, it looks like this. And, and it looks like other cells, but has a little bit different shape. It has a long tail, and ha it has a foot down here. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Oh, you can. Okay. This cell, just like any other cell, require certain things to function. But this cell also have hands coming out like this in the head of it, in the head, in the top right here, it has hands coming out. What are those hands do? Those, we have 200 billion cells like that. Each cell has 10,000 hands. In the end of each hand, they can communicate with the next cell. So the brain can process. 50 million reactions per second without you knowing. They talk to each other all the time. 
you're sitting right here looking at me and you don't know what the vision is do, what the hearing is do, what the temperature is do, what the breathing do, and all of this is happening all the time. And some of the brain cells might die, but we find out those cells, the 10,000 surrounding it, their job is to rebuild it back. To check it out, spread the information, and rebuild it again. It's very difficult to tell the brain. And because there are 200 billion of them, and the 200 billion is coming down, here is the head, and here is the body, like this, we make the head big today, and those 200 billion coming through a tiny hole, right here. So, if they are coming, they hit the cell right here, and and the wire go all the way right here, or come into the heart, or go into the stomach, or go into whatever. If you designing electric wire in yourself, these are all is happening right here inside the cell. With the nutrition you take, the omega three, the coq ten, the antioxidant, all of the stuff we're going to talk about. All of this generates electricity. The brain communicates with electricity. And when the electricity hits the bottom, it secretes hormones, which acetylcholine, norepinephrine, adrenaline, dopamine, serotonin, you name it, it's, it's secreted. And lots of you know what, a lot of you know those hormones control our life. Uh, if dopamine is too much, then you psych out. If the dopamine is too low, you depress. If ser serotonin is so, is so much, you're happy. If serotonin is very little, you depress. You follow me or no? Mm -hmm. Every one of those coming out, it's coming from a nutrient that you have eaten and you've given it to your brain cell. So the brain cells are here, they're not eating from the air. They're not getting things, they're getting things through what? Carotid are through circulation right here. We will show you later on. And then to make this brain cells function properly, and I want you to can imagine here for a second that, that this wire touching each other, if they touch each other, what happens? Well, short, short. What happened? A seizure. Or we have tremor. Or uh, you can control certain parts of your body. Or you cannot walk straight. Or you cannot coordinate. You know, all of this is because the wiring are crossing each other. These cells are surrounded by a substance called the what? The myelin. Cheese. The mother she's made from what? Lecithin. Lecithin? 100%. <laughs> so if somebody is eating beef and eggs and all the stuff, those don't have any lecithin in them. Lecithin found in soybean, found in different in plants, but they're not found in animal meat. So if somebody is not consuming enough lecithin, what happened to the myelin sheet? Deteriorates. If it deteriorates, it dries up in certain areas right here. When it dries up in multiple areas, we we'll call this area multiple sclerosis. Because the word sclerosis means a Latin Scleroderma, dry skin. Uh, you know, so arteriosclerosis dries up the arteries. You got that for the so sclerosis. So if you have a 
friend have mental skills and devastating disease to the people who hear about it. Oh my gosh, I've got multiple sclerosis, my life is over. That's what people have multiple sclerosis think, right? When we, when we get them, we don't say that. First, we tell them that we, ha we can reverse it. And number two, we can stop it. And we have several patients, we can give them the names, they can call and check if that's true or not. You understand? So even multiple sclerosis can be also controlled and reversed. So the head of the cell, uh, of, the, of, of the body of the cell itself, needs certain nutrients for it to function. What does it mean? It needs simple stuff. It needs protein, sugar, fat, vitamins, minerals, water, oxygen, and hormones. So, the same thing we've been talking about for 30 years on what the cell of the heart needs, what the cell of the stomach needs, what the cell, well now we're talking about the cell of the brain needs. So we repeat ourselves again today. We're going to talk a little bit about the protein. The protein is not, was not in the title of the lecture. He didn't say brain and protein. We, we made the title attractive to make you come to the lecture. <laughs> but if we said in the lecture we're going to talk about vitamin C and omega-3, you'll probably be home watching TV or something. But no, we just use what it hurts. Your brain is getting ruined, come over and listen to it. <laughs> and then we're going to talk about simple stuff. The protein, there is two kinds of protein. One is the animal protein, which is fish and chicken turkey, beef, and all of that, and milk and cheese. There's nothing wrong with those. And those are good proteins. But if they have hormones in it, if they have chemicals in it, they're not good protein. And then the other protein that most of the world lives on, called a vegetable protein. Lentils, soya bean, all kinds of beans. You know, family, you can consume, it has, it, it gives you uh, amino acid that is not present in the animal protein. If you're talking about lysine, like, uh, or leucine, uh, isoleucine, which you, you find it in cinch, or you find it in the soy complex, what does it do? Look at the hormones here. We, we said acetylcholine, what is choline? It's an amino acid. Uh, wh uh, wh what is adrenaline? What's dopamine? It's amino acid. Serotonin is amino acid. They come from protein. So the reason I mentioned the protein right now to start with before I forget in the end of the lecture, because many times I do, is because there is a big attack <coughs> against soy protein going on in the United States. There's a lot of articles written about protein. Soy protein can cause cancer of the breast. Soy protein you don't take. And we have lots of patients stop taking soy protein. And we have to go tell them, yes, you have to take it. That, that, the doctor told them, no, don't touch that soy protein because it's going to give you breast cancer. Sure, we have, uh, we have 3 trillion people live in Asia. They all consume soy protein for 3,000 years, and they all have cancer of the breast. You, you, you get in the mic, some cats come up. We have to learn from other people in the world. They don't have soy cancer. As a matter of fact, they have less cancer than us. As a matter of fact, i tell you something. When I was thinking what I'm going to be talking about today, I was trying to compare my patients who are coming from 
South America or the or certain parts of Mexico or certain parts of Africa and Asia to the other my patients who are living in big cities. And we we'll, we'll find a big difference between the people who are living in the far areas and the people who are living in the city areas. The city area people they have more cancer, more heart disease, more Alzheimer's. Show me some the, show me some Alzheimer in South America more than us in the United States or in Africa. If you got, went to Africa yourself, go to the mountains and see a bushman or tribesman, and you see maybe he's age 99 or 110, and talk to him, and he's very sharp. And he never went to Harvard, I'm glad. <laughs> and then, uh, and then he, he never had a car, he never had a TV, he never had anything that we have, which I'm glad we have, he doesn't, but he has something we don't have. He enjoyed his life, and we not. We have to go to a psychiatrist to get some drugs or some medication so we can live or, stay or be in a nursing home. So this brain cell requires protein. It requires also Sugar. Number one nutrient for the brain is sugar. And if you don't have enough sugar, you sweat, you cannot think, you shake, you have hypoglycemic reaction, right? All of us have these reactions when we're hungry or we, we all felt hypoglycemic, right or wrong? Is the answer to that eating sugar or chocolate or all of that? If it's an emergency, yeah, do it. You know, you have to eat sugar because it's an emergency, do it. But the answer to that sugar, uh, sugar problem is you should supposed to eat more whole wheat or whole grain or fruits. That's the answer. Not to eat more chocolate and more sugar or more orange juice or more apple juice or more fruit juices because juices the same like sugar. Most of you know what the sugar index is, or sugar load is. The amount of sugar you eat <coughs> entering the liver per second is what determines how bad it is for the liver. And the liver doesn't like sugar. But it will take it, give it to the brain. The brain consumes 60% of the sugar. Also, fat. The brain need fat. You have two choices of fat. You can eat animal fat, or you can eat, have olive oil, or corn oil, or peanut oil, sesame oil, any kind of oil, except mineral oil. So, <laughs> so you know what's in oil that is good. Fully unsaturated what? Fatty acid. So, this is something we have to throw in right away before we forget. When we talk about fat and the brain, we cannot forget to speak about certain fat that it, it makes 80% of the brain. It's called omega-3. And the sad part about omega-3, I find out that people who eat omega-3 do not know there is a difference between one kind of omega-3 and another kind of omega-3. Omega-3 can be six atoms, it can, which is a certain omega-3. Another can be 18 atoms, another can be 20 atoms, another can be 22 atoms. The DHA and EPA are 20 and 22 atoms. Are you with me or are you? Okay. The, uh, if somebody is eating omega-3 thinking it is omega-3 20 and it's not, then it's not going to work. Why it cannot work? Because human being cannot convert omega-16 or 18 to omega-20 or 22. Where fish can, and dogs can, and cats can, but we can. And when we analyze our brain, we take all these arms, you see right here, 
are omega 3. So if my guy doesn't have any fish and doesn't have any omega 3 and doesn't have anything related to fish at all, can I have enough omega 3 in my brain? The answer is no. It's no, you cannot make omega 3. You have to get it from fish. You have to get it from some uh, from oil or fish. <coughs> Knowingly that your brain is 80% omega 3 and your eye is 90%, retina is 90% omega 3, it makes you feel that you should be eating more omega 3, right or wrong? We gave a lecture last year, I think it was last year, we gave an omega-3 or two years ago. And we talked about a whole lecture on that. We don't have time to mention everything about it. It had a lot of things we talked about. Omega-3, uh, compare omega-3, and I have to prove that up to you because it's recorded right there. We compare omega-3 to Libitor, which is the beautiful triglyceride and cholesterol, Libitor lowers cholesterol by 30%, omega-3 lowers it by 40%. Libitor can cause all the side effects, dissolve the liver, muscles, heart, and cancer, and all the stuff, <coughs> omega-3 doesn't. You follow me or not? So we are happy always in my practice, we, uh, people think we make miracles, we only got does miracle when we take them off the guitar and put them in the way oh I feel so good. You feel so good that I took you off the poison <laughs> and put you on something good. Especially if you give shaky omega 3 that's called the process turn to the left. <coughs> Always turn to the left. Leave it. Very few dextrose to the right. Now if they are turning to the left in the fish, inside the fish this omega-3, that's a good omega-3, salmon, then I take it and I heat it or, or uh, expose it to oxygen, it turns to the right. It's still omega-3, right? Mm -hmm. Still 20 carbon acid, but it's turning to the right, the wrong direction. I don't have time here to talk about cis and trans and, and all of these things on omega-3 is what makes you flexible. What makes your arteries flexible, are your body flexible, is omega-3. <coughs> Number one nutrient for the brain. You don't have of the high reward in Alaska for the ancestors. None of them have Alzheimer's. None of them have dementia. And lots of them, they look you so fat and short and they're not attractive, but they help you. They have no heart to disease. They have no Alzheimer's, and they have no high blood pressure, and they have no diabetes. You follow me or not? You analyze the fat in their body, 99% omega-3. So they got it, they got it made. I'm not saying to you, go live in Alaska. <laughs> but I'm just saying to you, please pay attention to one supplement that many people forget. And the reason they forget is because the smell and the taste of fish and how many capsules. I understand that. Sometimes if I take about six or eight or ten and I burp, I have a good fish smell. I hate that. <laughs> but in the meantime, I have to remember my brain needs this, my eye needs this, my that. Then I have to cover it somehow. How do we cover it? We can finish lemons, we can put it on salads, we can squeeze it on this, we can do this, we can do that. I'm not here to babysit you. That's your problem, you know? Uh, people, say, I'm not, people say, I'm not gonna take my vitamins. So what, you're not gonna hurt me. We have patients, we tell them, you got to stop drinking, you stop cigarettes, you stop cocaine, you take your vitamins, no, I can't do that. Then I open the door, I said, here's the door, just don't come back. You see those people, uh, the nice thing about my house and my clinic, I have a cemetery across. <laughs> For some reason, God put me in the right place, you know? So I opened the window, I told, look at the cemetery. These people there, they don't complain. <laughs> you can go and join them, or go home, or be patient and listen. What, is, what does it 
take for somebody to understand when a doctor or the cardiologist or the internist who used to make one, you know, a million dollar a year salary and quit all of that to practice preventive medicine and spending half an hour or 45 minutes and, uh, and uh, we used to spend five minutes and still some people don't want to under listen. Those kind of people you have to get rid of in your life. If you have somebody who doesn't listen, get rid of them. Seriously, those are negative people and they drag you down to the grave. They could be your husband, they could be your wife, they could be your kids, they could be your friends. I'm not saying run away, but you have 24 hours in a day, give them 15 minutes, and you have the rest of the time. <laughs> Is that true or not? That sometimes we like to be alone. Right or wrong? And sometimes we like to be with somebody, but we don't like to be with somebody else. Why? Somebody we can have a good time, and the other make you it drains your energy, even the phone. You'd be laughing and, uh, and comedy or show or something, and all of a sudden you get a phone call, did you hear about this, did you hear about that, did you hear about this, did you hear about that. What, what you got to do with their, their problem? That's right. It says, listen, I don't want to really talk about it. it. If you need my help, I give you more omega-3, more vitamins, more vitamin C, yes, I will. Or I can give you a ride, I can take you to that. Whatever problem you want me to do physically, I can do it, but don't complain. And I hear that all the time. With certain people, I don't want to say uh, the name because it's recorded right there. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I said, you know, when I hear that, uh, some people say, you know, complain about their grandkids, complain about their kids, complain about their neighbors, complain about that. Then I said, it's Anything good in your life, God gave you at all? Here you go again. You always talk like that. I said, yeah, you can see me, you can walk, you can talk. You, there is so much. If you count the blessing you have sitting in this room this second, how many 50 million reactions per second to protect you from dying? That is blessing. You follow me or no? So I try to tell people, when we all get older, we love to be younger. But we have to keep trying hard. And the people who are taking shackle vitamins, the protein, the, the, the omega-3, the vitamin, the mineral, all the stuff, all this, all these years, the people who are been taking the shackle vitamin, the protein, and uh, vitamins and the mineral and uh, water and the fiber and all of that, those people, when I saw them 30 years ago, I told them, I hope you can be 80, not a nursing home. If I do that, I succeed. Now, they are 90, close to 90. They're still working. Then we have new products like Vivix, like uh, Vitalizer, I mean, we have a uh, new machine like the ECT we have in the office and this and that. We have so many things to make those people who are 80 or 90, 120, 130, with good health. If I remember now, every year we discover something new. You know, Shaki does, and we do also. Uh, we knew about homocysteine, we didn't know before. Now we can dissolve. Our inside the arteries was 100% success. Uh, we, before that, we didn't know. That from, we, we thought cholesterol triglycerides is the problem. But now we know it's not the problem. So the homocysteine problem, which uh, uh, I may not have time to cover it, but in the background, then you can read about it. The only cure for it are vitamins. We give IV methylation or we plus shackle vitamins. And then we have improvement of the circulation. So if we look at the brain cell, it needs also vitamins. And it, it's true, in the ad we put, uh, we're going to talk about acuity. We're going to be talking about the, the brochure said the flyer said, I don't have one. Any, anyway, uh, probably say something about, the, I, I bet you didn't say anything about lecithin or omega-3. But I mentioned that. Uh, 
the vitamins are anti what? Oxidant. And what is the aging process? Oxidation. And then I, because most of you know me and we have proved that, we put it, the American Journal of Cardiology, we put it so many times, you're gonna see it again today if we have the time. We have proof that, let me just find it fast. I think I, 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 I like to find it for good reason for the new people who are here to show them the word antioxidant, what does it mean? Because uh, they probably don't know, and uh, I cannot find it, so you just have to be patient. Pretty soon I find it. Anyway, uh, I rather draw a picture of it. We have an article in here that we showed in previous lectures that, that the cell, the, uh, the brain cell, if it gets exposed to free radicals from outside like radiation, or chemicals, or pesticides, or, or, or whatever, we call that free radical. We have vitamins in the wall of the cell right here. It's sitting, and he allows the food to go in. In the meantime, on the other side, he takes waste and puts it outside. And that's called vitamin E. So, Vitamin E is an antioxidant, and vitamin E cleans the cell. So the brain needs vitamin E. Also, I, by the way, there is an attack currently in the medical literature on vitamin E going on for the last six months. So I want you also to also know that but even vitamin E is in this case. Dr. Schutz, who discovered vitamin E, probably you know that already, in... Uh, in Washington State, the two brothers, what happened to him when he, when he said that vitamin E is good for the heart? He lost his license to practice medicine. And he had to go to Canada to practice there. You follow me or no? Mm -hmm. There is something about nutrition upset drug companies and hospitals and medical people and you tell them uh, you talk to your doctor who treats you for high blood pressure, treat you for cholesterol, for cancer, whatever it is they treat you for, once you mention nutrition, or exactly he wants to leave the room, he doesn't want to hear anything about it. Is that true or not? <laughs> you know, I have a patient who gets lined, he, got, uh, he was sitting with his wife, and then I saw him and I said, how come I haven't seen you for three months? Because his wife keeps coming every other week, we, we thought she, she had cancer, and today we discovered she did not have cancer. Uh, so all that time we thought she had cancer. So we worked so hard on it, she cannot breathe, she has problem and all of that. Blood clots in the lung and the heart, the brain, all that. And then he was sitting there, I said, yeah, by the way, I haven't seen you for, as, as a patient. I've seen him as a visitor. He said, oh yeah, I'm busy, uh, you know, and I didn't have time, I forgot. Then he said, by the way, I had light hit it last week. I was driving on the highway and I saw a deer, uh, I don't know, I saw a tractor in the ditch and I stopped and I tapped out. They called the ambulance and the ambulance came in and they told me how you feel, I feel fine, they sent me home. I said, that's not, that doesn't sound right, you know, that's not good to that. I said, I think you could have a stroke, maybe a stroke you have, uh, maybe low blood pressure, maybe something, maybe something like that. He said, you know, by the way, I had the same feeling this morning, that morning, when he's driving to my office. Then uh, that moment, I had a technician who was walking by uh, my office. I have a technician who does ultrasound. He goes, check his neck for me. Check the neck and we see the blood clot. 
in the artery and he's going for surgery tomorrow because he has over 80% blockage. And he is, you know, one of the first patients ever had surgery on the neck. But he also, we had an agreement that he can see me every month, every other month, so we can follow, and he did it. You know, so the <laughs> problem is his problem. So in any case, it, it turned out he can see the black box in front of, in front of him in the screen, we show him him. And I was worried because I bought him an extra omega-3, I bought him an comedy, I bought him Flavix, and I sent him to the hospital. And so the hospital called me and they told me what they're gonna do, we agreed on the, on the process. And they said, by the way, he gets, uh, he's gonna have ECP, what's that? <laughs> I told the doctor, you don't know ECP, you're a cardiologist? He said, yeah. I said, well, you have a machine in your hospital in the basement, why don't you look at it? <laughs> you know? Because they do, but they don't want to even tell the doctors they have it. And the doctor said, what is that? Oh my gosh, this is something uh, scary. So in any case, the vitamin E is important for that function. Vitamin C, also important because whenever you put all these nutrients inside, the fat, the protein, and the sugar inside, you, you put it in the mitochondria, right here, and the mitochondria produces what? Energy plus waste. And the waste we call free radicals. So when we say antioxidants are anti-free radicals, means anti-what? Anti-waste. So your body cleans itself all the time. All the time. As a matter of fact, the brain repairs itself. There is 50 million repairs per second happens inside the brain that we don't even know. We just discovered <laughs> that we see something in the MRI and we don't see it again. And uh, one of the things I put uh, over there for the people uh, to see, especially the women, all the hormones, we have, we have proofs that the natural right hormones, they do reverse uh, brain uh, aging process of the brain. The vitamins are important, but there are herbs also important like ginkgo, the acuity, uh, the, uh, the Shetley has several products that you can use for sleep, for depression, for stress, for uh, all kinds of things, and they do help the brain cells. The brain also needs minerals, and then you have to be sure which mineral you think is the most important in the brain. Calcium. Calcium is number one. No wonder, a long time ago, they used to say drink a glass of milk before you go to bed. Or if you feel you want to go sleep, take some calcium. Or if you're nervous, take calcium. Or if you have high blood pressure, take calcium. And the second thing after that is magnesium. And the third after that, potassium. And the fourth after that, believe it or not, salt, sodium. We have salt deficiency in our bodies these days. You have to remember that salt is not associated with high blood pressure. Cholesterol is not associated with clogged arteries. Eggs has nothing to do with high cholesterol. All this stuff I'm throwing at you on the, on the, on, on the DVD right there. Why? Because we know the eggs are not bad for you. It is, we know the salt is not bad. It is the calcium low calcium that makes the salt bad. But salt itself, it used to be more expensive than gold in the older days. Right in Africa, it was like that. And many of our patients would tell them, eat, put some salt on your salad, don't worry about it. You know, if you don't want to have a pickle, go ahead and have it. Your body's telling you you need it. Don't go like this, I have high blood pressure, I cannot touch with this, I cannot do that, I cannot, you know, eat with common sense. Minerals are important, and the most important is the one 
I just mentioned. Water also is important, and part of the problem with the brain is dehydration. That people are not consuming enough water. What is, how much water the body needs? It depends how much exercise you do. So if you're sweating a lot, you need more. If you're not sweating a lot, you need less. But there is a ratio, which is 64 ounces minimum, that you need per day. But you can go to 120 ounces if you're gonna sweat it. So how do I do that as my, myself? I will take a glass of water, 16 ounces, I will put four tablespoons of protein in the morning, and I will drink that for the protein source and also for the water source before I go to work. And then I do the same thing in the evening, so that's 32 ounces. And during the day in the clinic, I do that also, that's also right there. But nobody likes to drink water as water because it doesn't have taste. People like juice, like Coke, like beer, like things that bad for them. But how are we gonna make water acceptable to children when the government itself say to us that if you're thirsty, don't drink water, drink straw beer? <laughs> Do you remember that ad or a long time ago or no? Anybody remember the ad of straw beer? Okay, you don't? We we'll have to repeat the lecture now. <laughs> That was 16, 15 years ago, there was an ad on TV of a guy in the desert was very thirsty and came to this place to give him water, to drink cold water, and he said, no, I don't want water, I want a straw beer. <laughs> and yeah, any, of you, any of you remember that ad? You remember that, okay. So if, if a government agency allows such thing on, the t on TV, and Coke, and Pepsi, and beer used to get all of that. Nothing about water. In the, it's sad because in the, in the ads we see, and the kids, they see the same ads, that somebody's swimming in the pool and going on the other side and drinking Coke. Well, if you're thirsty, why don't you drink it from the water in the pool before you come out? <laughs> because cold Coke tastes better than warm water. You follow me or no? Yeah. <laughs> what did we drink in Egypt when I lived in the, in the, in the Nile Valley that we don't have refrigerators? The water was warm. But we had no complaint. The people in the desert all over the world, what do they do? Do they have refrigerators? <laughs> it is psychologically that we think cold water, cold drink, cold this, hot soup, hot this, you know, but, but really water itself is delicious if somebody wanna enjoy it, just like salad. Uh, people don't eat enough salad, but salad itself, rice, crispy salad, is really tasty if you wanna make it, but don't put all the stuff on it and then think it tastes good. Right. Tomato itself tastes good. Leather itself tastes good. Uh, carrot uh, by itself it tastes good. And there is no, no wonder my favorite thing I do uh, is always next to my bed is a, is a basket full of salad, a leather, different kind of leather. And if I'm hungry, I just grab one of them and eat that. If I'm hungry, I can grab different kinds, uh, different leathers, one is better, one is this, one is that. And then some cucumber, but tomatoes no, because they make a big mess. <laughs> okay. However, it's a habit because what did we do? Six of us when, my, when we come from school. My mother was not an educated woman in a village in Egypt. She's a farm woman. My dad was well educated. He she was not, but she's still our mom. When we come back from school, she would say, "Go to the field and find yourself something to eat the garden." So you have that line, you have this, you have that, you have that. Why do we like it? Because there's nothing else to eat. You follow me? If we had McDonald's, we'd all be over there eating McDonald's. But thanks God we didn't have McDonald's at that time. But you know, it is really surprising that I lived in Mexico, Guadalajara, and 
and then uh, many times I go to the mountain, you know, to buy organic beef or, or goats or something from the people in uh, uh, Tlaki Park, or this area is uh, close to Guadalajara. And, and then these people live simple life and they're ha happy, enjoying their life more than us, and they don't have refrigerator, they don't have TV, they don't have cars, they don't have any of what we got. So you kind of have to understand the water is important to add to the list of things you want to help the brain. Oxygen. The brain like exercise. Exercise the brain is not internet. It's not email. Exercise is not your finger exercise. No. Exercise means you go on the treadmill or you get out, take a walk or you swim and get more oxygen in it. That's the exercise the brain wants, the physical exercise. Because physical exercise itself makes you feel good. It makes your dopamine come out, make your serotonin, your adrenaline come out. And all of you, you know that. After you exercise, you feel better, right? So we don't have to talk about that. The hormones, I would like to mention that women, they suffer a lot from hormone deficiency. Thyroid problem, estrogen problem, progesterone problem, testosterone problem, and, and also uh, DHEA problem. Men also suffer from testosterone deficiency, DHEA deficiency, and also other hormone deficiency. So when we go to nursing home, we'll find 80% of women who have Alzheimer are women. Uh, of the people in the nursing home have Alzheimer are women. 80%. Why? Because it's related to hormone. Hormone, some people also made a rumor against hormone, that hormones cause breast cancer. Do you really believe that? When you were a woman, 17 years old, chasing every boy in town, and you have tons of estrogen, <laughs> You had cancer of the breast? No, why not? Because it was natural estrogen you make yourself. You follow me or no? But DDT and uh, herbicide and pesticide and all the stuff makes a lot nice in estrogen. <coughs> and that's what causes cancer. It's not the soy protein, it is the pesticide. And the stuff they did when they did the research on soy protein with pesticides, that is the, the research that showed the uh, soy protein had cancer, one study out of 17, because it has pesticides in it, and they hid that information from us. So, hormones are important. You've got to measure the hormones. Your blood test, see what one, and you have to replace it. Soy protein, chocolate menopausal complex, and all of the GLA, and they're all supply you with hormones. But you also have to measure the level and see are you in the same level you're supposed to be or not. If you're not, then Mexican wild yams, that's what we make our hormones, and you can get it yourself from bioidentical hormone from any pharmacy. You don't have to come to us. But you, you definitely have to know your level. You cannot uh, have deficiency. So after I already spent an hour and a half, yeah, it is. Uh, then we haven't even started the lecture. <laughs> so <laughs> nutrition problem cause brain problem. Circulation problem cause brain problem. Stress and lack of sleep causes brain problem. And remember that most of the stress you have in your life even these days, it's self-induced. You, you want me to say different? It is, it is you who cannot tolerate the stress. It is not the stress that's causing your problem. You follow me right now? If you take two people, one is very healthy and the other is not, expose them to the same stress, you get two different answers. Right or wrong? You want to experiment with that. Children, expose them to stress, expose us to stress. 
That child will have stress and he plays and he doesn't care. Because he's healthy. Because he has enough circulation. The brain is growing, the brain is functioning. Why should he worry about your problem with money? Or the house, or the bills, or uh, having a lien in your place? He doesn't care if the cars work or not. That is what you're supposed to be. Have a healthy brain that nothing bothers you. Just remember what I say tonight, please. Yesterday is gone. There is no reason to bring it forward. Tomorrow is not here. There is no reason to bring it ahead. Live the moment, live the day, and that is the best way. Because if you're going to worry about yesterday what everybody done, you're going to be the pre You can't change it. I was giving a lecture last week to my grandchildren. There are five of them, and I give them that advice. Because some of them are 10, some are 15, some are 13. And I know they're going through stage, they don't tell me everything. Some are girls, some are boys. So I said in general, all of you, whatever you have done wrong in your life, it's, never, it's not a big deal. I'm glad you did, it's over, don't do it again. And if you do it again, it's not a big deal, don't do it again. <laughs> and if you do it again, it's not a big deal, don't do it again. You follow me or not? I give them confidence, and I can see one of them that she has like tears in her eye, she has some kind of guilt, like, like she's happy to hear that. Because apparently she was worried about something, maybe she's falling in love with somebody, or a boy, or something, whatever. She's 14, you know, it's for months are working, of course. I can see that over on the table. I can see everything there, uh, it's working. So I was looking at the other side, not for her, and then when I glanced at her, I saw that, and then I said, even you, don't worry about it. Yesterday is over, you're perfect. You're always perfect. Uh, and people who try to say, you are not, what I mean by perfect, I'm not trying to say you like God, you're perfect, you know? I want to understand what I mean by perfect. You have to be the best way you can be. <coughs> and if you're not accepted the best way you can be, it's not a big deal. Nobody in, around you is worth it. You follow me or not? So we cannot keep judging this, judging this, keep judging that. Why don't we just love each other? I don't remember. I swear by God, this is true. In Cairo, when I was in Cairo, Egypt, I never asked somebody what's your religion. Never. We love each other, we don't even know which one, wh what, who's worship what. We don't even know which one's poor and which one's rich. We look at some of, uh, some of them are black or white or what, just all having a good time and nobody's having a problem. And I come here and I find, oh my gosh, when I landed in San Francisco and I saw the tension between black and white, 1968, I said, oh my gosh, what's going on here, you know? So much hate I can see in the people's eyes. Why can we be tolerant and love each other? So it's never too late to start uh, new. I'm going to show you a few things here that to finish with the lecture. And this is the cell we were talking about, the brain cell. And the cell right here, <coughs> oh, by the way, I have a new gadget right here. Let me see if you show I can do it right. <laughs> yeah, I can do it. Somebody gave me that gift about two hours ago. My well, nephew did. This, oh, look at that. That looks cute. Okay. <laughs> I used to use my finger. Now I can use that. As long as I don't do it, this not good. So anyway, these are the hands. That's omega-3. You see that or no? Yeah. We did not talk about this. Here, that's where Vivix works, in here. This is the nucleus where DNA gets mutated. Mutated DNA causes Alzheimer's. It is reversible because we discover inside the nucleus here, there are <coughs> DNA repair enzymes. And Vivix is well known for that. It's the most, that's what I got my PhD on. I finished my PhD on, on bioflavonoids, which when Shackle came out with Vivix, I was very happy because I didn't have to be 
eating so much tomatoes and eating so much you know, this, I just can, uh, the first day I came out with this uh, Vivix right there, I took a whole bottle in front of my grandkids, drank exactly the whole thing, <laughs> and I'm in the stomach, I tell them, now check on me in couple hours if I'm alive or dead. <laughs> because as a biochemist, I know what I'm doing. I understand some of the people who take Vivix have stomach upset, uh, some have diarrhea. Take it after meal. Don't drink it at the end of summer. It's super concentrated. It's the most powerful antioxidant in the world. The Vivix. It's inside the nucleus. Some people think it is because the mitochondria here uh, and give you energy. Remember, Dr. Shackley, when he came out with his protein and vitamin from the very beginning, people had lots of energy. <coughs> so Shackley is a company that keeps improving itself all the time. So when I, I am a consultant for them, when I suggested three years ago that I think we should change the strip that we had before, remember the old strip? Mm -hmm. yeah, the base, I said, let's change that and add everything in it. And let people take one strip, two strips, three strips per day, rather than open 20,000 bottles. You follow me or no? Mm -hmm. So if you want to give advice to someone about vitalizer, which I think uh, someplace around here I saw it, but I'm not gonna <laughs> worry about it. Oh, it's right here. Yeah, yeah, why not? So, so you, you guys don't get mad <laughs> that I didn't put it on. And that is the vitalizer that I suggested to them. I said, if we put it out, yeah, I was telling somebody a couple of days ago, I said, check the person actually. Why are you taking uh, so much of uh, vitamin C? What's the reason? One of my patients. They said because the vitalizer is not have enough. Okay, that's what the person said. I got the this sheet. I said, look how much vitamin C it has. 500 milligrams. <coughs> that's good dose. You want to have it better? Take two strips. That's a thousand. Taking two of all of this is better than taking one single vitamin by itself. You understand or not? Unless your doctor or me or somebody who knows medicine told you, yes, you take vitalizer plus you take six extra omega-3 because you have high cholesterol, yeah, you can accept to that. Or you have a cold or you have swine flu going around and you want to take extra zinc, extra vitamin C, extra nutrafurin, that's fine. But in general, all you need protein, the vitalizer, and the vivid. Then add the rest extra if you want to. But don't be dumb. And then start taking things less important and leaving things more important. You follow me or no? I still remember the man who, who made that company, Dr. Shackley, I still remember him until today, that we sat together in a small laboratory, no bigger than when the first company was started, and we're talking about my experience and his experience and all the stuff, and I thought, as long as you're making such product, there's no reason for me to look forward because I'm expert in nutrition, and I'm just gonna buy your product. I became a coordinator in three months. The reason I designed, some of you heard me in the past saying that, I, because I was accused in Salt Lake City in one of the lectures, we had 2,000 people in the lecture, that because I'm, I'm taking Shackley, I'm recommending it. Next day, I resolved. I said, I will continue to recommend it, but I don't want to be accused of saying that because. I don't get paid by Shackley, I don't get paid for this lecture, and I love to come and do it because what else I'm gonna do tonight anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so in any case, I want to just appreciate all of this, and I don't wanna waste any time on that because it's already on the, on the screen, but I wanted to show you the Vivix looks like that, but that is something you have to read and check the catalog. They have excellent literatures 
And Dr. Cheney is a great uh, speaker, and he's a great professor, and he has excellent tapes on it, you know. And there is no reason for me to spend more time. I am doing tonight's lecture as a clinical medical doctor who practice medicine. 30,000 patients I saw, the majority of chaplains, they live not zero of them in nursing home, and I expect them with the new treatments we're doing on them, which is ECP plus Vivix plus that, that they will have another 30 or 40 years to go yet. Yeah. So the, uh, these cells I mentioned to you right here, there, this, oh, that's a different one, but that's okay. It's just the same like the last one, it's just bigger. I want to show you how the cell gets rid of the antioxidants. You see this red stuff right here? You, can you see that? Yeah. Right there. These are the free radicals I was talking about. See, what we're talking about is moving in, moving out, moving out, moving out, coming and sleeping out. So what we're talking about is actually happening right now inside the brain. So, and it is a little bit more magnified in this picture, and the reason I want to keep repeating the same thing over and over and over and over again, because I want to put it in your mind. Number one thing you want is antioxidants uh, for the brain. Omega is a great antioxidant. C is a great antioxidant. Yes. So Vivix is great, Vitalizer is great, and if you want to take extra omega-3 because you have MS, uh, I'm sorry, uh, omega-3, yeah, that's right, then you need 12 omega 3 a day. If you have Parkinson, you need about 10 a day. If you have just uh, uh, start having some memory loss, diminish a little bit, take four a day, three a day, four a day. Remember, the more you take, the better you're gonna feel. How long it takes for you to feel good after you take omega-3? Six months. That's how long it takes to come and remember, this is omega-3 right here. This is the membrane right there, and this is how the chemicals come out <coughs> of the cell. I want to show you the uh, the picture of the the people, some of the people who have they don't have they didn't have enough antioxidants. And this is what we saw on them, on arteries that had all kind of plaques right here and the left leg is already plugged. And that's a 47 years old man. So the cause of death is blocked arteries. And then I had, uh, I always selected few because I know one of you told me you, you put too many slides. So I cut them down to three. So this is another one, 28 years old male right here. Picked him up from the side. Look at his right leg. So if you want to make it the brain, that's his brain right there, right here, just going to the brain, that will be the same thing. Are you following me or not? Mm -hmm. This is the leg right here, and that's a 28 years old. This is what it looks like. This is, this is, if that's happening in the leg, what's happened about the brain? We said, if you have it in one place, you're gonna have it in another place. And this is, uh, and this is what an artery looks like when it gets clogged, and that's what happens with sudden death. The blood clot clogs it, this four year old man died from a blood clot. But, but you are younger than that. So I selected other picture of, this is, um, This is a 10 years old. 10 years old male gets about from the side. In the artery going to the brain, we see lots of crystals accumulate in a 10 years old. And those crystals, they look like this, but I magnify them more, they look like that. So if you have arteries in your brain like this, is that elastic or not elastic? So all you have to do is cough or sneeze or hit your head 
like that person, the girl who, who died, she died because she had harming of the artery. It's not the accident. Kids, they hit their head all the time. They go, I guess, against the wall and they hit their bounce back, and they don't die, right or wrong. Why did she die from that accident? Because she had, and this is a 10 years old uh, who had that. To make it even more exciting, this is one month old male who died in an accident, and his three radicals are right there. His mother gave it to him. And the boy himself was fighting back with his own ribs, white blood cells, going out, scavengers taking the, cleaning his body, unfortunately he died. But that is one month old male right there. And this is the picture of the, the three radicals right here. But I just want to show you uh, something interesting uh, because it applies to the lecture. This picture right here is the reverse picture. All the white stuff you see right here, it used to be free radicals. There's no free radical this person have at all. His vitamins and omega-3 ate the free radicals inside and left empty hole. You follow me or no? This is an experiment on monkeys. And that is what we have seen after we give them so much that give them nutrition they cleaned again and we took a picture that way. If you have a spot, that might signal senility. And the senility is when you have this thing happen to you, that your cell of the brain is dead, full of what? Free radicals. Are you following me or no? I don't want to really waste your time going speaking on Alzheimer and dementia, what symptom, what sign. I want you to get to the point of nutrition and make you feel if you yourself don't feel good, there's something wrong. If your body's telling you something, something wrong. If you cannot remember, there's something wrong. If you have shaking or incoordination or this, just listen to your body because there's a lot, lot of symptoms and then uh, you, so you have to pay attention to. The, uh, I wanted to, I have, I have actually, for the people who've been listening to me all these years, I have 100x new sets of pictures uh, to show that the, the, when the baby is inside the mother, it has no problem whatsoever in the brain. Every single baby that's born to a healthy mother is the same. There is no two children, one is smart and one is stupid. <coughs> As a matter of fact, Einstein himself, who was, had a tremendous frontal lobe uh, activity, he himself had tremendous problem with memory. He's smart in certain things, but he was not smart in other things. So don't think that children, uh, IQ and all that stuff is, is important. It's <coughs> not important. You can take actually my... Uh, Get my lecture on Omega-3, uh, it's in the back, you can order it from Doris, and read about Omega-3 improving IQ for children. I, ha I mentioned that in the lecture I did two years ago, <coughs> after three years. But you can give it now up to 13 years. We, we used to think up to three, now we know the brain works until 13 years, <coughs> so we actually need to give. But what I'm trying to say here is, the, the first human that was created from one single cell, 
that the, the children of Adam and Eve, one of them, you know, think one of them, did that person have Parkinson's? If you follow me or not, we go back to our ancestors. Uh, Adam and Eve. Did the, the child of Adam and Eve had a Parkinson? Did they have Alzheimer's? Did they have a mass? Did they have heart disease? No. All this, no. So we cannot tell people, or the doctor says to your mom, have you had a family history of this? Then live with it. You have a family history. You have a family history. We, it's all acquired. 100% acquired. Even genetic, it's acquired. Because your parents ate so much sugar, a white flour, and your grandparents, this is why you're having problems. It doesn't mean it's inherited. And also, it's reversible. I also want to mention something here that I put it aside when, uh, when, uh, when I was looking. There is something inside all the cells of the body, the brain cells, called nutrition genes. So, you probably never heard about that. There's a gene inside the DNA itself. It's called nutrition gene. That is gene tells the cell where to put vitamin C, where to put vitamin E, where to put omega-3, where to put everything. And that gene expresses beneficial outcomes in lower the lipid, lower sugar, lower the blood pressure, lower cancer, lower that. And if that gene is bad, mutated, it does the opposite. So vivids will be important in that. I, this is, again, more information about the nutrition gene. Nutrigene gene interaction with gene expression, that means that gene is, is real, we all have it, and the more nutrition you put in your body, the more you're gonna use it right. How about the people who say, or the doctor who say, you're just wasting your money. Uh, that's what uh, the people were told, you know, you're wasting your money and uh, you're wasting, you, you're putting down the drain. I wanted to show you that this body, which I used to draw picture like that, this human body <laughs> with all the organs inside it, right here, and that is the same body right here with the names of all those organs, just I have the names in a different page, to show you when you are trying to help the brain, it also helps in the heart and the intestine and the face. Okay, then we're going to go to uh, then we go to actually the artery. And this is, we used to draw a picture of that. The arteries are all over the body, and if the brain doesn't get enough circulation, then you will develop a problem. We're going to talk in, uh, in October, probably more on the lymphatic system, but the reason I'm putting this picture here is because we'll find out that that machine we have called ECP, actually it drains all the lymphatic drainage of the whole body, detoxify the body. So we are more excited about that, uh, and I don't want to make that the major reason I'm here for the lecture, but I want to show you that the brain, it does need circulation. And that circulation, if it gets this is a common carotid, this is external, internal, and if you look inside the brain itself, you will see the brain actually has all the arteries coming to the brain to net. The only organ, two organs in the body do that, the heart and the brain. The heart the front of the heart feeds the back of the heart, and the back of the heart feeds the front of the heart, and that is 70% of the people, and 30% of the people don't have that. I don't know why. 
but the brain is different. The brain, all the arteries, the left femoral carotid, the right femoral carotid, the femoral artery, they all connect in one lake. It's called a lake of Willis. Well, it's like, this means you can plug this, this will work. You can plug this and this, those will work. It's very, very hard to get the brain to starve for blood. It has its own protection. But what the problem we see with the brain is even we do have the, the lake right here, we do have plugged arteries, and then we have stroke sometimes that affect the brain. And if it does affect the brain, this means the person will not function properly. And that is the picture of the brain, again, that I mentioned to you before. There's a lot of things here. I really don't want to waste your time. This is very complicated, but it here explains lots of personality problems. You know, like, you see the green right here? All the greens right here are the defense mechanism by God against you for society if you don't do anything wrong. This is all the dreams are the brakes that prevent you from coming out of the body. So it's called, they, they call the suppressor area. Suppressor area, suppressor, they have all suppressors. If you get excited, you're about to do something, it stops you from doing that. That's something also we discover that criminals and people who are being taught certain gang mentality, they have decrease of this area, and we can help those gangs with omega-3. It's true, we do help them. I have lots of patients who were in that aspect, and we give them lots of supplements, and then like a year later, two years later, they, I replay again what they have done, and they can't believe it. Because they help you. You follow me or not? I, they tell me all their problems, and it's confidential for me not to talk about their problem with anybody except them. That's confidentiality I have to keep. You follow me or no? But when I with them alone, I have to stress and everything they must do right or don't come back. When month after month after month of it's not healthier, healthier, I said fine, tell everybody that you were on cocaine and you were doing all these crimes and you were raping people and do all of that. Just tell them yourself. But you are healthy and you're better. So in any case, the reason behind that is because many of the children have, uh, or us, have hardening of the arteries, of blocked arteries like that, and we don't have enough circulation. If we don't have enough circulation, uh, then we will have a problem. Here is the, uh, uh, I wanted to say something I was reading. Actually, I wrote actually a small book on the brain. I have it with me right here. I was reading through it in the park a lot to see one chapters that I have. And I was learning from myself what I have forgotten already. And I wish I had time to read what I have. But what I have written, uh, one thing impressed me when I was wrote down, the, the, just to make, touch something, to touch. 50 million reactions that brain has to do to make you touch something. And that was, I didn't remember that. I remember lots of things, but that part, oh my gosh. Imagine that 50 million, how about if I look at you? How many millions of reactions we have? So the brain is very, very complicated, but the brain also is very adaptive and and, uh, and, and, and can help itself, can cure itself. There is one thing we know about the brain right here. You see, this is part of the brain. Why is this guy doing with his tongue right there and his hand and his leg right there? Because you have the same picture of you as in your brain, on the right side and the left side, both. You have four pictures of yourself inside the brain. Up. So if we touch this area right here, the surgery, <coughs> that person will feel it in his tongue. If we touch it by this one right here, he will move his foot. As a matter of fact, 
This is him, was the doctor name because I forgot. I have it in my book right here. Uh, his name was Dr. Wilder. Wilder Pinfield is his name. Okay. That doctor, what he did, he would open the brain and he would touch the memory center with two electrodes and the patient's awake, remembering everything happened in that area from 30 years ago. And these people had all behind it. And he touches. Memory never gets lost. It's there. So what he wanted to prove to us, that keep trying, keep trying, don't give up, the memory is never gone. You just have misconnection, and you can connect back. So what he did, Dr. Fields did, he touched, this is the motor area right here. Let's say he touched the sensor area or other area of the brain right here, the, the, the memory center here. When he touched that certain area, the person remembered everything is awake. And then when he took the, elect shot the electricity out, the person forgot. So he started again, move it again, move it again, and he can tell everything the person done through his life, he's talking about himself to him. And that's a real research about the brain. So, it's scary, isn't it? <laughs> you know, and he don't want Dr. Walter to be against you <laughs> because he would know everything about it. Okay, so the uh, brain also controls the body. Besides the memory, it also controls all the organs. Right here through nerve. You follow me or no? So those cells coming from the brain are going like this through, and there's a relay station right here. There's all the relay station to attach one nerve to another nerve like that, so they synapse with each other, they communicate with each other. The nerve cannot go for from here all the way to down to the foot, so it touches in different stations each other, and if it misses, the person might have Parkinson, might have incoordination, or might have tremor, or might have a problem, because there is misconnect from place right here. But I'll show you, and that is, that, this is another picture of the brain, and I have left everything out, the name of everything, right here, what all these things are. But believe me, when I was in medical school, they have sections of the brain like this, with pins in it, and they tell us exactly, so we have to tell them exactly what the part is. In, in other. And this is what we have learned. These are the names of all the parts. So the brain is a very, very complex. And this is intentionally why I didn't start with this. I was planning to start with this. And then after I sat down here, I changed my mind. I said, no, I'm going to talk about nutrition, then about chemicals, about homocysteine, about the ATP machine, about hormones, then keep that to the last. Because it is complicated. This is, again, another picture of the, of the brain right here. And then, again, all the different functions, different parts. One of the things I want you to remember about the brain is this diagram right here. Maybe, maybe I take that out and put this instead. The brain also controls what? What are all of these right here? Glands. Control all the hormone <coughs> function. And that is These are the glands I was talking about. You can see the diagram of the antagonist stimulation depression. Some, uh, this is a pituitary gland and all these all other glands in the body. 